back, back of back of lies. And treasure. Men, we need to hear God. That was the situation in the land of Israel. And God closed the heaven over their land. That is the situation in the church today. There is a lot of treachery that is going on. One man married a woman. She's not working. The only thing she does was to put his foot, wash his clothes, and iron them. <laughs> One day he came back home. And he was just feeling on top of the world. He said, Woman, you have not contributed anything. This house I built it alone. Your cobble is not inside. All the furniture I bought them. Nothing. You have done nothing. Your work is just a gift by yourself. The woman said, For 20 years I've married you. For 20 years I've opened my body to you. For 20 years I've cooked your food. For 20 years I've washed your clothes. Sometimes you will come, you are discouraged. Business deal has collapsed. And you feel like giving up. I'll come beside you and say, please, try this one again. Don't worry. God will have thoughts. It is not the end of life. Shut up, my husband. Try it again. And you go and try And one day, God blessed him. And he came and said, This woman, you have not contributed to the living of the house. Can you see what I'm saying? Say, so if you are to pay me for being your advisor, how much will you have paid me? Calculate the amount of money you have had for someone to open a body for 20 years for you. If you have to go and pay for it, how much will you pay? You see, even if your wife is not doing anything, is that anyone feeling that don't do anything? You don't know just being a wife is a full-time service. If you are going to pay her, how much will you pay her for just staying at home? Now some might be graduates. Manaka and Luke and there was treachery all over the land. And God look at the church and there is treachery. And one of the reasons why homes are breaking down is because of the treasure. She is thy companion. Yet you have betrayed the trust because God has blessed you. Now you turn around and say, Woman, get out of this place. Men, and boys, <laughs> treachery must never be an attitude of a Christian. It is wickedness. And the Bible says, don't you know that the wicked shall not inherit the kingdom of God? very important. Now when I got married, I look at the marriage covenant. From time to time I used to watch my wedding video. 
And I've been listening to what? Will you do this? I will give all I want. Thank you. There was a covenant you have entered with the wife of your youth. Do not betray trust. You see, let me tell you something. You see, I met many Christians who begin to argue that a Christian can have two wives. Abraham had two wives. Anyway, he, he let us ask one to go. David Jacob, he said, if God was pleased with the prophet, how, why do you think he will not be pleased with me? It's not the issue of the old covenant. It's the issue of the covenant you have entered with that woman. At the beginning of the journey, what was the agreement? At the beginning of the journey, when the pastor is saying, Will you, you are supposed to say, it is not scriptural. You are supposed to say, David married six wives. But you stood there and said, Will you? You say, Yes, I will. God looked at the covenant you have entered. And later, when money comes, you begin to say what? David is a prophet. A man, someone told me. Could you imagine you say, God said what? David is a man after my own heart. And David is a polygamist. That is to say, a polygamist is a man after the heart of God. <laughs> See, that's a proverb that says, They that the gods want to destroy, they face me, they will first make you what? My man. What was the covenant that you entered into? The Bible said God was the witness at the covenant. Young man. If you have intention of marrying many wives, don't come to the church and they are asking you, will you, will you? You are saying, I will, I will. Yes, I do. You will leave, I will leave. You will keep, I will leave. Then after five years, you say, but David married six wives. God is a witness to the covenant you have entered. If you break the covenant, God will if you like go from heaven to earth and come back the word of God still stands God was a witness and we too were what if you are a witness then you are a witness then you are a witness I think I was like a okay. witness. So I'm a witness. So if this man you don't look like someone who will be comfort. <laughs> I wanted to say if you have become fat that this man wants to see. <laughs> be careful with the covenant. The Bible says. When they want, and I tell you, those who are not married, there are plenty of them. We must have an agreement. Don't take anything for what for granted. Tell him what is your own stand concerning polygamy and what I agree. not be what have hazard. There must be an understanding. The covenant must be tight. I was here somewhere, someone was preaching. It really blessed my soul. He said, you must have an understanding. 
in the covenant, it means about what is submission. You must have an agreement about what is law. Now let me give an example of submission. There are some men, submission to them means that what? When salary enter, as the alert is entering, you are also alerting him. That is his definition of submission. But your own definition of submission is when the money enter, I will say, husband, I receive salary. <laughs> That's all. To you, that is what? You are submitted because you have been funding. But him, the salary must what? Come in. You must have an agreement even before the wedding. What is your stand on my money? <laughs> ah. <laughs> There must be agreement. Majority of the problems in marriage is because people have not agreed on matters before they enter the marriage. So perceptions are different. And it's in the marriage that you want to sort it out. Even love. You need to have agreement what is love. A woman said, my husband loved me. But he's not loving me the way I want him to love me. I said, see another one again. <laughs> he's not loving me the way I want him to love me. I was confused. <laughs> Maybe during discussion time, somebody will explain that to me. <laughs> And a profit in the house. One day has done that. What does she want again? She should collect salary. She should buy the Crimea now. And the woman is thinking he has abandoned me. What is the covenant that you have entered? If there was no covenant, then you can't blame anybody of treachery. Because why did he break? I will walk or I will not walk. You know, some men will just marry a man with degree. And once she enters the house, you say what? You are not going to walk. This is the cause of many problems. What was the covenant? What was the agreement? And if he breaks it, treachery has entered. I'm emphasizing more men. Praise the Lord. Verse 16, for the Lord, the God of Israel, said he hated putting away. One treasury is putting away. Now putting away at the extreme could be divorce, isn't it? But it's not always, that's not only what putting away. Putting away is when you don't regard the woman a deed. Her advice is nothing to you. Her opinions are nothing to you. You don't care about her. You put her away. You put her in the corner. You have forgotten about her. And we'll come here, we'll pray for the Lord. Oh God, send revival. Oh, the condition of the church is so bad. And yet a man has put his wife away. Emotionally detached completely from her. Remember, my dad was counseling some couples who were very small. Every time they like, my father would just... You see him going out, you rush. He was one kind, very zealous pastor. And he carried the matter of the families of the church upon his head. So this issue of 
marital disharmony, pain and suffering has been there for a very long time. Then one day, you saw the woman pregnant. <laughs> He said, almost every night, I'm going to your house to separate fights. How come? He said, during the period, I will lie down on bed. I will not touch my own wife because I'm praying for you. <laughs> and you now you are pregnant. He said, you learned my lesson. <laughs> But I know that even with that emotional attachment, if the man is pressed, he will just jump, isn't it? Sometimes some men even rape their wives. So I say, can a man rape his wife? Yes. Yes. If she say no, it is no. If you force her, it is what? It is a rape. Because Christ never pushes himself on the church. And the Bible said, you should love your wife as what? As Christ loved the church. The Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. When he comes, I want to interact with you. And you are busy. What will he do? He will pull back. The next thing that is mentioned here. Is that. You have covered yourself with violence. You know, some men are violent. Something happened to me. I went to just the family. We were sitting with the mother, the sisters, and everybody in the parlor. We were, we were, we were just watching television. We were watching television. And I heard boom, boom. When I turned around, I was the only person in the parlor. <laughs> And I was wondering what was going on. <laughs> the letter I saw someone came in bold like this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Could I get good evening? So I said, Good evening. Just walk into this room. Then later they started coming out one by one, including the white room. <laughs> And they started to go. They started to go. Our father is in the house. Violent men. Today we talk about gender based violence, isn't it? One thing that God has observed in that generation is violence against women. You raise your hand and what? Pow, pow, pow. I just have some pictures. So a few months ago, okay, so a man carrying nine. His wife is about eight months pregnant. He just what? Pierce her stomach. And your knife enter into the heart of the baby. <laughs> You know, women like how to talk. And men don't know how to talk. What they know is how to work. Cha 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 <laughs> All this talking you are doing, just beat me, coward man. Are you a dog? Are you a donkey? Only donkey must beat them for them to respond to. But what we are considering is that men are violent, and this is one of the things that is destroying the altar. You see, as a man, you must make up your mind. When I got married, I said, I made up my mind. I will not what? I will not raise my hand against my wife. I said, I will not raise my hand. 
Why well, she's a woman? Why is that being cha 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 cha? <laughs> Sorry, dear. <laughs> and I feel like. <laughs> Then I move out of the house. And I say, Holy Spirit, cool me. <laughs> <laughs> so cool me. <laughs> and they cooled me. For 13 years, I never slapped her. I never took her, I never beat her. But you see, violent men. Smarty, ha, smarty, have a man. And you expect your prayers to be answered. You expect God to be with you. You see, you must make up your mind. Until you make up your mind, you are going to act treacherously. It must be a determination. I told you that when I look at the marriage bar, you know, when I got married, I've been struggling like any young man with sexual sins. The night I got married, it's not done on me that I don't have to what, struggle again. Uh, this man is my wife and it's legal for me to do whatever I want to do anytime I want to do then I feel one ah God we have arrived at the destination now <laughs> now I can enjoy that thing that I was struggling <laughs> I saw one lady. <laughs> and I begin to have some reactions. And I said, ah, I thought, I thought it is over. <laughs> Brother. I said, I thought it's over. So it is possible for me, even when I have somebody at home, I could see be attracted to somebody outside. <laughs> And I realized that polygamy is not a cure for lust because you can have five wives, ten wives, because the human nature is corrupt. One day you will get tired of eating coke or and you want to eat a pussy. <laughs> Say something. It is that time that you are supposed to go back to the covenant. And I say, God, I have already decided. There is no going back. Say this time around. There is no going back. Look, what I want to say, we must not ask the treacherous and expect the blessings of God. The sin of infidelity has penetrated the church and is destroying the very fabric of home. One of the greatest concerns we have today in our home is our world. my husband. You know, women are very jealous. When you discover that your husband is going out, you will start crying, isn't it? You will feel betrayed. You will feel what? Bitter. And you begin to fight. People of God, the Bible says marriage is honorable enough. And the best should never be defiled because those who defile it, God will judge them. I fear that us. 